from movies to television used to seem like a downgrade. Now it's all the rage. In trouble again, Abu? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV shows based on a movie. To the Stargate. For this list, we're taking a look at TV shows that captured all the best aspects of their film predecessors while also creating something fresh and innovative for the small screen. You lying Terminator bitch. You're building Skynet. Number 10, Terminator, The Sarah Connor Chronicles. John, now. Now. Although Terminator 2 had wrapped up virtually every loose end, the Connor story was far from over. Yes, definitely. Following the events of T2, The Sarah Connor Chronicles was the kind of show you had to watch from day one if you had any hope of getting it, thanks to its complex time-traveling narrative. I don't know anything anymore. While the series was short-lived, it still offered ideas and character development superior to that of a certain sequel by McGee. Come on! At the show's heart was a meaningful dynamic between Lena Headey's Sarah. Mom, how many times have I told you it's freaky when you do that? I'm sorry. Thomas Decker's John. I'm not hacking, Mom. God, I know the rules. They're like written on the inside of my eyeballs, all right? And Summer Glau's Cameron. So, maybe I'll see you later? Reminding us that this franchise is about much more than action. We lose everybody we love. She said that. Number nine, La Femme Nikita. Hi, I'm Nikita. La Femme Nikita took the concept of Luc Besson's 1990 thriller and tweaked it with one small, yet game-changing alteration. Shoot him now. Now, Nikita, now. In the film, Nikita is a convicted cop killer who's recruited by the government to be an assassin after they fake her death. <gasps> In the show, Nikita is wrongfully accused of murder in a grave misunderstanding and recruited. You have been found guilty of murder in the first degree. I am sentencing you to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. I didn't kill anyone. This makes for a more complicated character arc as Nikita is forced to transform from a helpless homeless woman to an unstoppable weapon, all while trying to hang on to her humanity. You can learn to shoot. You can learn to fight. But there's no weapon as powerful as your femininity. Number eight, The Odd Couple. Right in here, Oscar. The cinematic adaptation of Neil Simon's play The Odd Couple was essentially a feature-length sitcom elevated by superb comedic writing and acting. Oh, Felix, 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 Felix. I know, I know, I know, I know. It made sense for the franchise to branch out to TV to produce a show about two divorced men, scruffy Oscar and the neurotic Felix, trying to coexist in the same apartment. Felix, they're crazy about us. They think we're big shots in the building. But who could replace the unmatched, mismatched pair of Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau? Listen, you want to talk to me, buddy? Put down that spoon. Yeah, spoon! <laughs> you dumb ignoramus, that is a ladle. You did not know that's a ladle. Fortunately, Tony Randall and Jack Klugman were more than up to the task. Coffee. Cup. Empty. Full. Hot. I don't get it. I want a hot cup of coffee! Oh, I'm sorry. In the spirit of previous incarnations, this show produced grade A comedy based on chemistry and situation. Now, Aristophanes! <laughs> Ridiculous! <laughs> you got it! <laughs> Number seven, Star Wars The Clone Wars. Your helmets, remove them. Your faces I wish to see. After getting off to a rocky start with the panned 2008 animated feature, the Clone Wars saga got on the right track with this TV continuation. Affirmative. Clones gave away their position. Taking place between Episode 2 and Episode 3. Lock on to Mar 2. The Clone Wars wasn't without some of the more annoying elements of the prequel trilogy. Hello, Jar Jar Binks. Lisa, no one needs to be big help with the negotiations. But like the previous 2D animated series, the Clone Wars ultimately proved to be a worthy entry in the Star Wars saga, with sharp CGI, 
impressive action, deep philosophies, Yoda kicking ass. And the return of Darth Maul. I must have revenge. Number six, Hannibal. Mr. Graham. Like all other screen adaptations in the Hannibal Lecter franchise, Hannibal is based on characters developed by novelist Thomas Harris. But unlike Ridley Scott's 2001 film Hannibal, for example, the show is never grotesque for the sake of being grotesque. He doesn't want these girls to suffer. He kills them quickly and to his thinking with mercy. While its network home might seem limited, Brian Fuller and company inject every shot with a haunting atmosphere coated in dark cinematography. Are you reconstructing his fantasies? Huh. What kind of problems does he have? Uh, he has a few. Driving the story is a fascinating relationship between Hugh Dancy's emotionally unstable Will Graham and Mott Mickelson, who creates a chilling Hannibal Lecter of his own without ever impersonating Anthony Hopkins' immortal performance. I was hoping you and I wouldn't have to say goodbye. Nothing seen, no set. Number five, Friday Night Lights. I think that everybody loves football. Peter Berg's film version of the novel Friday Night Lights was a solid success. The village idiot. You want people to think you're the village idiot? Is that what you want people to think? But he completely topped himself with his similarly themed TV series. We all feel honored and we feel fully prepared to represent this beloved community this Friday night and every Friday night. Like any true underdog, the show went through a number of tribulations, like low ratings and switching networks. Clear eyes, full hearts can't lose. lose. In the end, however, Friday Night Lights transcended all expectations with its representation of middle America, powerful themes concerning what it means to grow up, the impact of community, and the most powerful depiction of a TV marriage in some time. I said I'm pregnant. You're pregnant. Yeah. If you assume this is merely a football show, prepare to be blindsided. There's more important things in football. Number four, Bates Motel. You're new. What's your name? Norman Bates. Ever wonder exactly what the deal was between Norman Bates and his mother? Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. Well, in this series, we get a peek behind the shower curtain in Bates Motel, which acts as both a prequel and a modern-day reimagining of Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. <laughs> Freddie Highmore is pitch perfect as Norman, who's harboring a dark passenger under his mild-mannered exterior. Holy hell, mother, we're totally screwed. What are we doing? We don't know what we're doing. Norman, Norman. We just don't know what we're doing. Calm down. Vera Farmiga is equally outstanding as Norma Bates, a mom who loves her son just a little too much. We belong to each other. I love you, Norman. Their scenes together are often uncomfortable and unsettling, but the show is just too addictive to resist. You're the best thing that has ever happened to me. I love you too, Mom. Number three, MASH. Those two, they're ruining this war for all of us. The MASH franchise faced a challenge when it transitioned from the big to small screen, as it was building on an Oscar-winning picture. Uh, Henry's got our orders, we can go home. It didn't help that almost none of the film's original cast was returning. I know, I know, it's nothing, but look, how many times do you get to go to Japan with your golf clubs? Needless to say, most TV adaptations like this are dead on arrival. It goes against my training to say take two Ashmen and go get yourself killed. MASH, on the other hand, prospered for 11 hugely successful seasons, arguably surpassing the quality of its source material. Last man standing on his feet at the end wins the war. Like the movie and the novel on which they were both based, MASH recognized that even in the darkest of times, humor, love, and joy can still be found. We did it again, screwed up in reverse. I keep telling you, we gotta give up this preoccupation with keeping people alive or we'll never get out of here. It's no use, we're doomed. Maybe we should start using rusty instruments. Number two, Stargate SG-1. If you do not return in 24 hours, your remote transmitter codes will be locked out and the iris will be sealed permanently. 
if you weren't a fan of where Roland Emmerich's original Stargate movie took you, good news! The follow-up series opened up the universe with a variety of new worlds that were jam-packed full of fun characters. Daniel, what are you teaching these kids? Try it! Although it came out around the same time as other pioneering sci-fi dramas, this first of several shows in the Stargate franchise still stood out thanks to its memorable settings. This is just incredible. Inventive scenarios, a strong sense of mystery, and even stronger sense of awe. The geomagnetic storm is building up. We should stay long. Just try to overlook that whole aliens built the pyramids thing. Well, who do you think built the pyramids? I don't have any idea who built them. I mean, that men from Atlantis? <laughs> or Martians, perhaps? <laughs> Before we change the channel to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Hold on. Isn't Hess tied to that syndicate of fellas out of Fargo? Gun runners and such? Well, they say. Never seen the proof. Do you have any questions, buddy? Do you want to ask me anything, or...? Can I watch TV now? I have 30 minutes of screen time banked from last night. Sure. The fiber analysis came back from a lab in L.A. They found animal hairs on the body from the woods. Giles, I gotta go. Wait, no! Scott, you're not gonna believe what the animal was! It was a wolf. Damn it. Freeze! Don't move. Hands where I can see him. Easy, fellas. Take Agent Garrett into custody. He's the murderer they call the clairvoyant. He's a traitor. Young man, how old are you? Nine. Number one, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You're not seeing the big picture here. I mean, that gym was full of vampire... asbestos. 1992's Buffy the Vampire Slayer was not a critical or financial hit. No! No! Don't let her hit! Don't kill us! Please keep her out! No! However, writer Joss Whedon saw the errors in his film and reinvented the premise for television with a multi-layered leading heroine, too many unforgettable supporting characters to count. Who are you? Let's just say, I'm a friend. And an assortment of imaginative storylines. Oh, that sounds like fun. You wouldn't expect a TV adaptation of a movie about a vampire slayer to be anything special. First of all, I'm a vampire slayer. And secondly, I'm retired. Hey, I know. Why don't you kill him? But at its best, Buffy was the most creative, emotional, and epic show ever put on television, making us forget the lesser movie ever even existed. I'm done so many years ago. You can make me feel like it isn't so. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite movie turned TV show? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Still much to learn, you have. Surrender, you should. Thank you.